Right, so in my previous video, I made the Shepherd's Sling and I tested it out and it works splendidly. In the making of it, I used three different knots. The figure of eight, the ball in, and the fisherman's knot. But in the construction, I didn't really demonstrate those knots. So I thought I'd use just a couple of minutes just to go through those knots in case anybody wants to make the shepherd's sling. Or more importantly, if you want to learn some knots because a cordage is a very useful tool. But it's even more useful if you know a few knots so you know what to tie in what circumstances. So these three knots are a brilliant three knots to know if you don't know many knots. So rather than just watching this video, if you don't know knots, get yourself a piece of cordage and go through it with me. Because that's the only way to learn knots. At least it's the only way to remember knots, is to actually do them. So I'm going to start off with the simplest of the three knots and that's the figure of eight. And it's used in a lot of different circumstances. In climbing. Dog's lost a ball, she wants me to go and get it for her. In climbing, the figure of eight is a very useful knot, but we're just gonna look at the figure of eight on its own right now. So I'm gonna demonstrate it on this piece of polythene rope, which is not ideal for demonstrating knots on but it's adequate. And a lot of you will know the most simplest knot of all already. And it's the overhand knot. And it's simply form a loop, put one end of the rope through that loop and pull. And you get a knot in the rope. And that knot can be used as a stopper knot. And that knot would have been quite adequate in place of that figure of eight. The only thing I was concerned about was the cordage I used was quite thin and when you get an overhand knot, simple overhand knot in thin cordage and pull it tight over a period of time it can be very difficult to undo if you later want to adjust it. So I thought the figure of eight would be much better. But if you know the overhand knot then you're pretty much there for the figure of eight. Because you just start as if you're going to tie an overhand knot, form your loop, take your end, loose end, and instead of passing it up through the bottom of that loop, just carry on once more round, or another half turn round, another half turn. So instead of coming up through the bottom to form your overhand knot, go half a turn more and go down through the top and form your figure of eight knot. And hopefully you can see there why that's called the figure of eight knot, because it looks like a figure of eight. At least in one direction it looks like a figure of eight. So that's what I used as the stopper knot. And the advantage with that is you can pull it as hard as you like. Well, two advantages. One, it forms a slightly bigger knot in the very narrow cordage I was using. But also, if you need to adjust it, it's very easy to adjust. Particularly easy in this cordage, which is quite stiff. So it's not ideal for practicing knots in. But it's what we've got, it's what we're going with. Right, so that was the knot in one of the free ends of the shepherd's sling. The other free end had another very common and very useful knot which was the ball in. Now the ball in is the knot or the loop. I needed the loop to go around my finger to secure the one end of the sling while the other end had the stopper knot which I could, at the right moment in time, release. 
and this one stayed fastened but I didn't want it constricting around my finger. There's other knots I could have tied but I chose to tie the bowling again because after being under considerable strain you can easily get this knot undone and I'll show you the bowling. Now the bowling is a bit more complicated so you've got your running end of your rope there and you've got one end here that you want to put a loop into. So grasp the main rope some way down and form a, form a small loop in it by holding it in your hand. I'm just going to grasp, I'm just going to grasp it, I'm just going to grasp it and turn it over. So I've, I've just formed a loop formed a loop in the cordage there and then there's a little tail of the rabbit that goes comes out of the hole goes around the tree and goes back down the hole and cinch that up and you've formed the knot and no matter how hard I pull on this line this loop won't tighten up and I'm just going to go through that one more time so there are different ways of tying this knot but this is essentially the way I put a loop in the end of a rope using the bowling I just hand over turn it away from me form a little loop and I want the, the, the working loop to end up in this bit of rope here and the rabbit goes up the hole around the tree and the tree is this rope going off down here and then back down the rope back down the hole and then dress that knot up which is pull it cin cinch it up cinch it up pull it tight I'd have a little bit more line coming out the out this end here for this type of rope especially and there I've formed my loop there this is a very well known knot in climbing and sailing in climbing you if you wanted to put a rope around yourself you would tie this knot because that rope wouldn't constrict and if you were a sailor and you were putting the end of a rope around a buoy to move a yacht for instance this is the sort of rope you would this is the sort of knot you would use because after your tide had been going up and down and the waves had been pulling and jerking your boat you'd still be able at the end of the day to get this knot undone now this isn't a good rope for tying that sort of knot in but uh, most ropes would be so it wouldn't come out quite that easy but would come out relatively easy and it can be tied relatively quickly as well and uh, I know all those times in the army where you just just for a laugh or a test or something you had to tie a ball in one-handed uh, I used to do that sort of thing uh, you could do that with the rope around you a bit easier. Right so that was the ball in then and for the last knot I tied the last knot twice and that was the knot I used to tie the leather onto the two pieces of cordage and that is the fisherman's knot. I believe I called it the double fisherman's knot in the in the uh, video but that was essentially where you tie two ropes together uh, using a fisherman's knot on each on each knot on each rope so we'll go through that then but for this uh, because this plastic rope is so stiff I'm not going to tie it in the plastic rope I'm going to tie it in the um, in the um, paracord the three three millimeter paracord so just to demonstrate it then I've got two more pieces of leather here and what we were doing was tying one end of the paracord onto these two pieces of leather which we'd already punched holes in 
So we're passing one end through the holes and then we've got what I'm calling the working end or the working rope going back there and the, the tag end here and you just form a bite which is just a lay the rope back on itself like that and I'm taking this tag end and wrapping it two times two complete turns around the main line and then passing opening up those loops so keeping those loops loose and I'm also wrapping I'm wrapping back down towards the the leather so I'm wrapping twice round once twice keep those loops loose and then feed that tag end back through those loops and alongside the main line and then you can just pull on there and that will tighten up so this is a knot that will cinch up and it will get tight and that's the knot I chose to tie onto the uh, the pouch obviously then there's another line that goes onto that pouch after you've crossed the two pieces of leather over to make the pouch so that's the fisherman's knot and the fisherman's knot it's very good for tying two ropes together and also you can use it to turn a length of rope into a sling by tying what's known as the double fisherman's so I'll just quickly do it in this with this piece of cordage so whereas I formed a bait on here I just lay the two ends of the rope across each other take one of them two turns round and through then take the other one two ends round and through cinch them up and they will lock in together nice and neatly and you've formed a, a loop you've formed a complete loop in this with this rope so that's how you make slings in climbing for climbing and that's a good secure knot for tying two ropes together far more secure than just the reef knot or the square knot on its own far more secure that's the, that's the rope you would use in in climbing and then you just tape these tape these two ends up up stop them from getting in the way so that's the fisherman's fisherman's knot so I just wanted to cover those knots because of the importance of knots even in everyday life everyday life you're tying knots. If you've got shoelaces, you're tying knots. If you've got a roof rack, I mean nowadays you've got these ratchets, but uh, you can use ropes on your roof rack. Tie your dog to a bollard with the end of the lead. You don't want to be tying any old overhand on top of overhand knots and then it take you half an hour to get the knots out and not know at all how secure the knots are so get yourself a bit of rope a bit of cordage practice a few knots I only know a few not as many as I would like to so but I, I do know quite a few but uh, not as many as a lot of people so I just wanted to cover that uh, quick short video and I'll be with back with you before the end of the week or within a week anyway right so we're enjoying the weather over here in the UK so make the most of what you got while you've got it